Hello, welcome back. In uh, today's uh, class, we will be looking at uh, hypothesis testing in uh, linear regression. So, what is the uh, uh, motivation for doing this test? When we develop a linear regression model, we want to see which of the variables we had taken or considered in the experiment are really important. At the beginning, uh, when we are not uh, having a prior uh, knowledge or experience, we really do not know which variables are important, which variables are not important. So, we would like to include as many variables as possible in our experimental program and um, we perform the experiment and uh, we get the data. Now, we want to analyze the data and uh, identify which of the uh, variables uh, are really significant and uh, influence the experiment strongly. So, how do we go about it? That is what we are going to see in today's lecture. So, as the slide indicates, the test is meant to check whether there is a linear relationship between the response y and the subset of the regressor variables x1, x2, so on to xk. So, these regressor variables are uh, actually uh, the variables we are uh, investigating in the experiment. So, we carry out the hypothesis testing in multiple linear regression. Our uh, null hypothesis is uh, beta 1 equals uh, beta 2, so on to beta k is equal to 0. I will make a small correction here. Yeah. So, we have uh, beta 1 equals beta 2, so on to beta k is equal to 0, that is a null hypothesis. So, what it really means is uh, that uh, none of the uh, regression coefficients uh, are uh, having numbers that are significantly different from 0. Look, the beta 1, beta 2, so on to beta k may take either negative values or positive values. If they take positive values, it means that uh, they are positively affecting the response. For example, the yield of a chemical reaction may increase with increasing temperature. On the other hand, if you have a negative uh, value for uh, beta j, then uh, it means that when the variable increases, uh, it actually has a negative uh, effect on the response. For example, when uh, uh, pressure increases, the volume may decrease. So, it depends upon the experiment we are looking at. When the beta j that is one of the uh, regression uh, uh, coefficients becomes 0, then uh, beta j x j will be 0. This means that uh, whatever may be the value taken by x j, the effect of that particular variable on the experiment is insignificant. So, this is what we are trying to test. The null hypothesis says that all the uh, regression coefficients are 0. That means, none of the variables are uh, really affecting the process. This is the most uh, skeptical uh, point of view uh, a person may take at the beginning of the experiment. But as experimenters, we should be really skeptical and uh, not uh, have some preconceived notions. See, the uh, alternate hypothesis uh, says that uh, beta j is not equal to 0 for at least uh, 1 j. This means that uh, among all the uh, regression coefficients, uh, uh, at least one of them is non-zero. In other words, there is at least one variable in the experiment which is actually affecting the process response. So, when we accept the null hypothesis, we uh, agree that uh, none of the uh, 
regression coefficients are uh, taking a value other than 0. So, we say that H naught uh, the null hypothesis is uh, beta 1 equals beta 2 so on to beta k is equal to 0. If we agree with this then none of the variables are really affecting the response. The alternate hypothesis is for at least uh, 1 j beta 1 or beta 2 or so on to beta k at least one of them is non-zero. It may be negative or it may be positive. So, the rejection of H naught implies that at least one of the regressor variables x1, x2, so on to uh, xk contributes uh, significantly to the linear regression model. So, here we are having uh, k variables, k independent variables x1, x2, so on to xk and uh, these are the regression coefficients which are uh, attached to these regressor variables and uh, when let us say that uh, beta j takes a value 0, beta j x j will be equal to 0 and there would not be any effect of that particular regressor variable x j on the process response. So, how to carry out this hypothesis testing? So, we have the uh, experimental data with us and uh, we uh, first find the total sum of squares and then uh, we split it into regression sum of squares and uh, residual sum of squares. So, I have indicated this briefly here sum of squares total equals sum of squares regression plus sum of squares residual. So, whenever we compute the uh, squares, we also have to find the degrees of freedom. Whenever we want to compute the variance, not only we find the deviation from the mean, but we also divide it by n minus 1, where uh, n is the total number of observations. So, the sum of squares is actually divided by a certain uh, value which is related to the data size. In our present analysis also, whenever we are considering uh, linear regression, we have the total sum of squares and uh, we have to scale it by the appropriate or associated degrees of freedom. So, the total sum of squares has uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom, where n is the total number of observations. The sum of squares of regression has k degrees of freedom, where uh, k is related to the total number of regression coefficients in the following manner. So, we have uh, p equals k plus 1. Okay, I think we have already come across this earlier to reiterate uh, p is the total number of parameters and uh, that includes the uh, parameter beta naught, okay, the so called intercept of the regression model. The residual sum of squares uh, will then have n minus p degrees of freedom, where n is the total number of responses. So, now we can go to the analysis of variance table. We have in the uh, ANOVA table the usual uh, entities, the source of variation, the sum of squares associated with the source of variation, the degrees of freedom and uh, we divide the uh, sum of squares with the uh, associated degrees of freedom to get the uh, mean square. So, k is equal to p minus 1, that means the total number of parameters minus 1. Here we are not considering the intercept, we are only considering uh, the uh, regression coefficients beta 1, beta 2, so on to beta k. And when we divide the sum of squares uh, of regression with the k degrees of freedom, we get the mean square regression. And then we also have the uh, residual sum of squares 
this is a very important uh, aspect in regression analysis because only by looking at the residuals and the pattern of the residuals, we can really uh, judge about the quality of the fit. So, we have the residual sum of squares as sum of squares of uh, E. Uh, again, instead of rather writing uh, residuals, uh, I have used the um, subscript E. Residuals may also be associated with the uh, error uh, because uh, it is the difference between uh, the uh, uh, experimental value and the model prediction. So, the residual is defined as the difference between the experimental value and the model prediction. And uh, so, we have uh, the error uh, with respect to the model prediction and uh, the sum of squares associated with the residuals is given by SSE and the degrees of freedom associated with that is n minus p. So, the mean square would be sum of squares uh, of the residuals divided by n minus p that will give you mean square uh, residuals. So, we take the ratio of uh, mean square regression to the mean square uh, residual to get uh, the F naught value. So, we also have the total sum of squares SST which is having n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, it will look like n minus uh, p plus k and uh, k is nothing but uh, p minus 1. So, n minus p plus p minus 1 will give us n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, when you add up these two, uh, you get the total degrees of freedom as n minus 1. So, that is what uh, this slide also tells. Uh, repeating n is the total number of observations and p is the total number of parameters including the intercept parameter beta naught. And so, we have k is equal to n minus uh, 1 minus uh, n minus p and we get k is equal to p minus 1. What I am doing is uh, we saw that uh, k and n minus p add up to give n minus 1. This is uh, telling the same thing in a different way. We just uh, subtract uh, n minus p from n minus 1 and we get p minus 1, k is equal to p minus 1. So, we can take whatever root we want. The uh, regression uh, mean square scaled by error variance sigma squared follows a chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom. Uh, we have to make a proper uh, judgment regarding the observed uh, uh, mean squares. So, we have mean square regression, we have mean square uh, error or mean square residuals. So, the ratio of the two we consider and we have to test it against a suitable distribution. What is that suitable distribution? Uh, we also know that uh, the mean square regression and the mean square residual are uh, independent and uh, we uh, divide both of them by sigma squared and uh, we then have the mean square uh, uh, regression uh, divided by sigma squared to form the chi square distribution with the k degrees of freedom. So, when we divide MSR by sigma squared, it leads to a chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom. And when you divide MSR by sigma squared, you have to divide MSE also by sigma squared and you get a another chi square distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom. And uh, the ratio of the two chi square distributions is uh, the F distribution. So, the regression and the residual mean squares are independent and their ratio follows an F distribution with k numerator and n minus p denominator degrees of freedom. So, you can see that uh, we have f naught here and that is sum of squares of regression divided by uh, k and uh, this is the sum of squares of the residuals or the sum of square of the error divided by n minus p. Uh, the k degrees of freedom are in the numerator and uh, n minus p degrees of freedom are uh, in the denominator. What I am trying to say here is uh, the k degrees of freedom are associated with the sum of squares in the numerator and the n minus p degrees of freedom are associated with the sum of squares of the residuals which is in the denominator. So, we have f naught is equal to uh, 
mean square regression by mean square error. The sigma squared actually cancels out. So, we can simply take F naught as MSR by MSE. And uh, we do the usual uh, F test. By now, you should be familiar with uh, the implementation of the F test. We have also done some uh, practice problems or example sets earlier. So, I request you to uh, go through those uh, problems and uh, refresh your memory. So, we also know that uh, we reject the null hypothesis H naught if the test statistic computed above is greater than F alpha k n minus p. Alpha is the uh, significance level usually taken as 0.05. So, if it uh, lies in the uh, critical region or uh, in the rejection region, then uh, we reject the null hypothesis. So, continuing with our discussion on uh, the re resolution of the total sum of squares, the total sum of squares is uh, given by sigma i is equal to 1 to n y i minus y bar whole squared, where uh, y i is the actual ith experimental data recorded by the experimenter and y bar is the average of all the n experimental observations. So, you have uh, this uh, relationship uh, given here. This may be uh, expanded and uh, simplified. The derivation is fairly straightforward and uh, you get uh, sigma i equals 1 to n y i squared uh, minus sigma i equals 1 to n y i whole squared divided by n. This uh, indicates the sum of the square of all the responses and uh, this is uh, the sum of the observations uh, is squared. So, please do not confuse this with this term. Here, uh, the individual observation is squared. Uh, similarly, all the other observations are also squared. Then the sum is taken. Here, first the sum is taken and uh, then it is squared. So, this may be uh, represented by y prime y. Sigma i equals 1 to n y i squared is nothing but uh, y prime y. So, you have the column vector of the responses and uh, a transpose is taken for the column vector and uh, then uh, it uh, is multiplied with uh, the actual uh, response column vector and when you do that, you will get uh, the sum of the square of all the observations and then you also have uh, the sum of the observations squared divided by n. Here n is the total number of responses. So, this is the total sum of squares. And uh, as you can see, we are gradually moving on to uh, the representation of uh, the various sum of squares using matrix uh, notation. The matrix method is quite convenient and it helps us to do the calculations which are otherwise tedious in a very efficient manner. So, we have the sum of squares of the residuals as uh, y prime y minus beta hat prime x prime y. So, the uh, sum of squares of the uh, residuals may be written as uh, y prime y minus sigma equals 1 to n y i whole squared by n minus beta hat prime x prime y minus sigma equals 1 to n y i whole squared divided by n. What I am doing here is I am subtracting and adding this term sigma equals 1 to n y i whole squared by n and uh, that leads to by definition the sum of squares of the uh, total here and uh, we also have this term as the sum of squares of regression. We started off by saying that uh, sum of squares uh, total is equal to sum of squares uh, regression plus sum of squares residual. So, we have the expression for uh, the sum of squares of the uh, uh, residuals 
and uh, we also have the expression for the sum of squares uh, total and so when we uh, uh, subtract uh, the sum of squares of the uh, residuals from the total sum of squares we get the regression sum of squares. So, this blue uh, term here represents the sum of squares of regression. So, when you have the um, uh, regression linear regression parameters estimated and you have the x matrix and you have the y column vector, you can uh, get the regression sum of squares by uh, considering a beta hat prime x prime y minus sigma equals 1 to n y i whole squared by n. Beta hat is nothing but uh, the vector of uh, the estimated regression parameters including the uh, intercept beta hat naught. And uh, then x is the matrix, x matrix. So, x prime would be the transpose of the x matrix. We have already seen how to set up the x matrix in one of the earlier lectures and then y is the vector of observations. So, we have uh, sum of squares of residual as sum of squares of total minus sum of squares of regression and we have uh, the sum of squares of error given by this uh, relation and then the sum of squares of regression is given by this relation. So, now coming back to uh, the hypothesis tests on individual regression coefficients. Okay. So, we have to see whether a particular regression coefficient uh, beta j is uh, actually taking up a particular value beta j naught or uh, it is not uh, taking that particular value. So, now we are uh, concentrating on uh, the individual uh, regression coefficients and uh, whether they take up a value or not. Okay. So, you can put 0 here and uh, say that, that pretty much uh, the regression coefficient is uh, insignificant and does not affect the uh, model or it does not affect the response in fact. And uh, then the alternate hypothesis is the value uh, uh, is not equal to 0, but it may be less than 0 or greater than 0. So, to be more general instead of fixing uh, the value to be 0 all the time, instead of fixing beta j naught to be 0 all the time, we can fix it to some other value 100 for example. So, it need not be always 0, you can also hypothesize on a particular value taken by the regression parameter. Instead of looking at the whole bunch of regression parameters, now we are concentrating on a single regression parameter. It may be a good idea for you to not proceed with the lecture as of now, just pause a bit and then uh, think yourself how you will uh, carry out the test okay, for this particular uh, case. We have already come across this earlier and I would like you to think about it and then uh, write down on a, a notebook you must be carrying with you as to how you would proceed. So, I hope uh, you have at least made an attempt and uh, let us see how to do it. So, we have uh, the tests on uh, individual uh, regression coefficients. So, the H naught is beta j is equal to beta j naught and H1 is uh, beta j is not equal to beta j naught. And, uh, then as you can see here, we carry out a t test. Okay. So, you must uh, recollect the t test now. If you are unable to remember, I request you to just go back and refresh your memory. So, t naught is equal to beta j hat minus beta j naught by square root of sigma squared c j j. That is beta j hat minus beta j naught by standard error of beta hat j. Now, we know that uh, the t test is associated with a certain degrees of freedom and uh, what degrees of freedom we should use in the t test. Uh, very interesting result is use the degrees of freedom which you had used for the residual sum of squares in the t test also. And uh, you should also by now be uh, familiar with what is meant by the standard error of uh, beta j hat and uh, 
you should recollect that it is uh, a sigma squared C j j where uh, C j j is the uh, diagonal uh, j j the element of the variance covariance matrix and uh, sigma squared is the error variance. Unfortunately, we do not know the error variance, the true value of the error variance. So, what we do is we use the standard error instead. So, as I said earlier uh, just now a CJJ is the diagonal element of the variance covariance matrix and the variance covariance matrix is given by x prime x inverse uh, corresponding to beta hat j. Now, let us uh, see the regression sum of squares uh, due to the intercept beta hat naught. Okay, this is a very interesting thing and uh, in some places uh, it may be skipped and that may lead to some uh, loss of clarity in understanding the concept of linear regression. In some uh, ANOVA tables uh, you would find the sum of squares corrected for beta hat naught or uh, in uh, some tables of ANOVA you will find uncorrected total sum of squares. So, what is really the uh, correction all about? So, it depends on whether we consider the intercept or not. So, we know the total sum of squares is uh, y prime y minus sigma is equal to 1 to n y i whole squared by n. The actual total sum of squares uh, based on the responses is y prime y. You simply square each response and then total it up and that gives you the actual total sum of squares. So, you are deducting uh, some portion uh, from the actual total sum of squares. That is you are deducting i is equal to 1 to n sigma y i whole squared by n. Okay. So, this is uh, the correction you are doing to the total sum of squares. And uh, the regression sum of squares does not include the intercept uh, beta hat naught contribution and has contributions only from beta hat 1, beta hat 2, beta hat 3, so on to beta hat k. So, that is the reason why uh, since you are having these uh, 1 to k which is k independent regression parameters you have k degrees of freedom. So, what actually happens is the contribution to the sum of squares due to beta hat naught is sigma is equal to 1 to n y i whole squared by n. Okay. So, we are removing the contribution to uh, the total sum of squares uh, that is uh, y prime y uh, with uh, the subtraction uh, by n y bar squared. Okay. Sigma is equal to 1 to n y i whole squared by n is n y bar squared and what we are doing is we are uh, subtracting from the total sum of squares n y bar squared. We call that as the contribution by the intercept parameter beta hat naught. Okay. Why should it be uh, n y bar squared? Okay. This is a very simple explanation uh, to this, it is quite nice actually. So, when you uh, consider uh, no other parameter except beta hat naught okay, in your regression model, then the uh, regression parameter beta hat naught would be simply the average of the experimental data points. Okay. Uh, what does it mean? Suppose uh, we are uh, very lazy to fit a regression model considering the variables. We say that uh, y predicted is equal to beta hat naught only. Okay. So, then what will happen is if we carry out the regression analysis, we will find that the estimated beta naught parameter would be only y bar, okay. the average of all the responses. So, when you have scattered data, uh, then uh, let us say that uh, we are having only one uh, regressor variable x 1. 
So, we are having y 1 as a function of x 1 and when you plot the data on the graph sheet, you will find that uh, you will have uh, scattered data and when you are fitting only a simple model, then the model will be uh, nothing but y hat is equal to y bar, where y bar is the average of the responses and you will have one horizontal line passing through the data points. Let me illustrate uh, this on the board. So, what we have here is the experimental data, we are plotting y as a function of x 1. Obviously, there is a effect of x 1 on the response, that is why you are finding that when x 1 increases, the data also increases. But if we take up a regression model saying that uh, y naught is equal to, uh, y hat is equal to beta naught, okay, this is our uh, very simple regression model. Then all we are doing is fitting a straight line which is nothing but the average of all the uh, responses and so we get a horizontal or a straight line uh, parallel to the x axis and that straight line is nothing but uh, the average value y bar. So, since uh, beta hat naught is equal to y bar, the sum of squares contribution from beta hat naught will be uh, y bar squared plus y bar squared for the n experimental data points and you will get n y bar squared. So, this is the contribution to the sum of squares uh, uh, by the parameter beta hat naught. So, if you want to correct uh, your uh, sum of squares and the regression sum of squares, uh, with the contribution uh, from beta hat naught, then you subtract uh, it with n y bar squared and that is what we are doing. Now, let us uh, go back to the uh, resolution of the residual sum of squares and uh, uh, even before that uh, we looked at the resolution of the total sum of squares. You can see that the sum of squares of total, we have subtracted the contribution by the parameter beta hat naught and that is y prime y minus n y bar squared. So, the n y bar squared represents the uh, contribution from the intercept beta hat naught. So, when you are uh, subtracting n y bar squared from the total sum of squares, you should also subtract uh, n y bar squared on the other side of the equality, so that you maintain the balance. Okay. So, we see that uh, this is the total sum of squares and uh, this is the regression sum of squares. Y prime y is the actual total sum of squares. Beta prime, uh, beta hat prime x prime y is the uh, regression uh, sum of squares including all the regression coefficients and we are subtracting uh, here n y bar squared and then we are also subtracting n y bar squared. So, this is the uh, total sum of squares corrected for beta hat naught and this is the regression sum of squares uh, excluding the uh, parameter beta hat naught. So, I hope uh, now you have understood why uh, we subtract n y bar squared from the total sum of squares and from the regression sum of squares. Then we looked at uh, the contribution from beta hat naught and uh, the regression sum of squares uh, when it is uh, subtracted by n y bar squared does not uh, include the contribution from beta hat naught. 
So the number of degrees of freedom is reduced by 1 because we are removing beta hat naught from the list of parameters from the list of p parameters. So p minus 1 will be equal to k. Now let us look at uh, the extra sum of squares uh, method. This is a very uh, interesting uh, uh, issue. Okay. Uh, what we saw earlier was uh, looking at uh, individual uh, regression coefficients. So, we can keep doing it for uh, all the uh, uh, regression variables or regression coefficients. We can start with uh, beta 1 hat, then we can look at beta 2 hat and so on to beta uh, k hat. Okay. So, that is a somewhat uh, tedious process. And uh, sometimes uh, you may also have an existing model and uh, when you report the existing model to your uh, supervisor, uh, he may say that uh, you have considered only uh, a model with two variables, why do not you consider or build a model with uh, five variables. So, what I am trying to say is uh, we can use the uh, matrix uh, or linear algebra concepts to do this pretty efficiently. Rather than uh, do one variable or one regression variable at a time, which is a somewhat tedious process, we can uh, first analyze a model uh, with a certain bunch of variables and uh, that would be an existing model. And then we can also see the impact of uh, adding uh, another bunch of variables to the already existing model. And uh, we can then decide whether adding the additional bunch of variables uh, also has any impact or value addition to the regression model. Okay. So, normally uh, the simpler the model, the less number of variables a model has, it is elegant and it is convenient to use and it is also efficient. Okay. So, you have uh, done a lot of work and then uh, reduced uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, process uh, by describing its dependence uh, with only a few selected variables. And when you present this model to let us say to the management, the uh, people there may be a bit disappointed. Okay, we thought this is such a complicated process, why do you have only a few variables describing the uh, response? Uh, it looks like other uh, parameters. Uh, or uh, other regressor variables also might uh, influence the uh, experiment. So, why do not you go back and check your model. So, what we can do is instead of adding one uh, regressor variable by considering the effect of uh, one regression coefficient at a time, we can take a whole bunch of uh, regressor variables with their associated regression coefficients and use a method called as the extra sum of squares uh, approach to see the impact on the process response. So, what we are doing is we are going to conduct a hypothesis test to see whether the uh, new bunch of uh, regression coefficients are indeed uh, valuable. And if the test says that none of the new added uh, regression coefficients are significant, all of them may be pretty much taken to be 0, then you may go to the management and say look uh, my original model was in fact adequate, there was absolutely a very negligible impact of uh, considering the effect of additional variables. So, what we do here is uh, something which may be a bit difficult. Uh, for people who are not familiar with uh, linear algebra, but uh, actually it is very uh, simple. Okay. So, let us look at uh, the beta column vector, which is comprised of uh, two uh, sub uh, vectors, if you can call it like that, beta 1 and uh, beta 2. So, beta 2 is a column vector and beta 1 is also another column vector when you put them one below another, it uh, leads to the complete uh, column vector beta. So, beta 2 is a pre-existing or uh, model which is already existing and beta 1 is the uh, uh, set of regression coefficients uh, which you want to add to an already existing model. 
So, let us say that uh, beta 1 comprises of r uh, regression uh, uh, coefficients and uh, beta 2 is comprising of uh, p minus r uh, regression coefficients. So, we say that uh, h naught beta 1 is equal to 0 and h 1 beta 1 is not equal to 0. There is a small difference here from what we have done earlier. Earlier we were looking at scalars or just single values uh, beta 1, but now I am putting beta 1 in bold that means it is a vector comprising of r uh, regression coefficients beta uh, 1 hat, beta 2 hat so on to beta r hat. Okay. So, we are saying that the entire bunch of uh, uh, entities in that uh, beta 1 column vector is equal to 0 and the alternate hypothesis says that uh, beta 1 is not equal to 0. Okay. And so, you are having uh, the new model represented by uh, beta 1 and the already existing uh, model by beta 2. So, the regression coefficient vector beta is split into what was already present in the model equation beta 2 and what is currently being added to it which is beta 1. Okay. So, we want to see what is the impact of adding the new terms in beta 1 vector to an already existing model. So, what we do here is uh, we first look at the full model. So, that is what we have to do first. We know the sum of squares of regression including the parameter beta hat naught as beta hat prime x prime y. Let me sort of revise uh, when we include in the intercept also we have beta prime uh, beta hat prime x prime y. But if you want to exclude uh, the parameter intercept uh, beta hat naught then you have to subtract n y bar squared but you are not doing it here. Okay, you are considering all the parameters including the intercept beta hat naught. That is why you have sum of squares of regression as beta hat prime x prime y. And then you have the mean square error as uh, y prime y minus uh, beta hat prime x prime y and that you scale it by the n minus p degrees of freedom. Okay. And also another thing you have to notice uh, whether you consider beta hat naught or uh, not consider uh, beta hat naught, uh, the mean square error does not really care because uh, the n y bar squared you subtracted from y prime y, you are also subtracting from beta hat prime x prime y. So, that n y bar squared actually cancels out. So, whether you consider n y, uh, y bar squared or not consider n y bar squared, it does not really matter to mean square error because you are uh, subtracting uh, consistently uh, n y bar squared from y prime y and also from uh, beta hat prime x prime y. So, that thing actually cancels out and so this mean square error does not really bother about it. Okay. In other words, it does not really care whether you are uh, considering the model with the intercept or uh, without the intercept. Okay. So, We have the mean square uh, residual or the mean square error here and uh, let me uh, sort of uh, make a correction here to be consistent with what I had uh, written earlier. I will change this mean square error to mean square re residual since both of them uh, have the same starting alphabet R, we use MSE, okay. but uh, we use mean square residual when we use the full form. Okay. So, I would like to uh, conclude uh, by saying that uh, the mean square residual does not uh, really depend upon whether you have uh, considered the actual total sum of squares or the corrected uh, sum of squares, be it total sum of squares or regression sum of squares. If you are considering the corrected uh, sum of squares, the n y bar squared will consistently cancel out uh, here and here. Uh, 
okay. But if you are not using it, well and good, no problem. You are considering the parameter beta hat naught and the mean square residual value will be unchanged. Okay. So, the sum of squares of regression beta hat naught is the regression sum of squares due to beta hat naught corresponding to the full model including all the partial regression coefficients beta hat naught, beta hat 1, so on to beta hat k. Okay. So, as beta hat naught is included, the term n y bar squared is not subtracted. Okay. So, that a full model, this is what we have been considering until now, is now split into a model already existing with the subset of the coefficients and a new model with the additional set of uh, regression coefficients. Okay. So, let us look at the full model. This is the vector of responses. This is the x matrix. This is the uh, beta column vector, which is the full set of uh, regression coefficients. And then you also have the error column vector. You might not probably for whatever reason, uh, you might not have considered beta naught and beta 1. You might have started your model with the beta 2, beta 3, so on to beta k only. That is your existing model. But then uh, your boss would say what happened to the intercept? what happened to the uh, variable 1, they also look uh, important to me from an intuitive point of view, why do not you include it. So, then a new model would be adding beta naught and beta 1. Okay. So, what we do is this is the full model, we split this into x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2 plus epsilon. Actually, this is not simple uh, algebraic uh, addition. Uh, this is uh, involving matrices. This is the overall uh, response uh, vector y and then you have uh, the x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2. Beta 1 is the uh, new uh, model. Uh, it is a new uh, vector comprising of the uh, uh, new regression coefficients and uh, beta 2 is the uh, column vector comprising of the old regression coefficients and uh, x 1 is again a sub matrix of x which are dealing with uh, the uh, regressor uh, variables corresponding to beta 1. So, x 1 is the columns of x associated with the beta 1 and the x 2 is the columns of x matrix associated with beta 2. So, just let us go back. For example, I told you that the new model uh, was uh, based on uh, beta naught and beta 1 based on the uh, boss's recommendation. Okay. So, then the x 1 matrix will be the sub matrix obtained by uh, taking the first two columns, okay, that is what uh, we are looking at. The intercept will be associated with just one and then uh, the uh, beta 1 would be associated with uh, x 1 1, x 2 1, so on to x n 1. For example, you will have beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 1 and then you will have beta naught plus beta 1 x 2 1. So, you are uh, considering the uh, effect of the intercept and you are also considering the effect of the first regressor variable x 1. Okay. So, this is how we do it. The uh, old model already had these uh, uh, regressor variables starting from x 2, x 3, so on to x k. So, x 2 would be associated with beta 2, x 3 would be associated with beta 3 and uh, x k would be associated with beta k. So, we have to consider a hypothesis test to check if beta 1 is really significant. The reduced model if the null hypothesis is true becomes y is equal to x 2 beta 2 plus uh, epsilon. Null hypothesis means that there is no value addition on adding uh, the uh, elements in beta 1. So, you are okay with this model y is equal to beta 2 uh, x 2 beta 2 plus epsilon. So, the coefficients of the reduced model can be found in the usual way by x 2 prime x 2 inverse x 2 prime y. 
So, we have the extra sum of squares method. This is the full model. This is the uh, model split into contributions from beta 1 and uh, then beta 2 or uh, in fact, let me come again. It is the contributions from beta 2 and then from beta 1 and uh, the sum of squares of regression due to beta 2 hat alone is pretty straightforward. It is beta uh, hat 2 prime x 2 prime and so the sum of squares of regression uh, due to beta hat 1 given beta 2 hat already present in the model is the uh, beta hat prime x prime y minus beta hat 2 prime x 2 prime y. Okay. In order to find the regression contribution by the new model, we take the full model first, the regression sum of squares from the full model and then from that we subtract the uh, regression sum of squares from the already existing model so that the difference will give you the contribution to the regression sum of squares from the new model. And the uh, degrees of freedom for the original or the full regression sum of squares is p, it includes all the parameters while the degrees of freedom for the sum of squares of regression uh, beta hat 1 given beta hat 2 is r because if you recollect we split the beta column vector into two parts into two column vectors. The first column vector was of size r and the second column vector was of size p minus r. So, the full model is having a degrees of freedom of p and the new model is having a degrees of freedom of r. Okay. And so, the sum of squares of regression beta hat 1 given beta hat 2 is also termed as the extra sum of squares due to beta hat 1. So, what is the extra regression sum of squares brought in by the uh, new set of regression coefficients? So, it is the increase in the regression sum of squares due to including the variables x1, x2, so on to xr in the model and it is also independent of mean square error. So, this concludes our uh, lecture uh, on the uh, hypothesis testing in uh, linear regression. Uh, it is quite elegant and you can see that whatever we uh, did in our uh, earlier uh, phase or the first phase of the design of experiments namely the hypothesis testing is also playing a very valuable role here. Thanks for your attention.